It's Nolan. What's going on, beautiful people? It's the kid Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. I hope everybody is doing well out there. If y'all saw that intro, that was just me doing a little live band performance of my song Lotto. Y'all know I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs that I've made. It's basically the theme song to the channel when we get that, 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 that little uh, that little chick. You know what I'm saying? But um Again, hope everyone is doing well. So now in this particular video, we're going to be addressing Megan Thee Stallion and her performance at the Kamala Harris rally here in Atlanta in my in my hometown. You know what I mean, we're going to be addressing some of the backlash that's going on, seeing if there's any base to it. Personally, I don't believe so. But we're going to go over what people are saying, what their criticisms are, addressing those head on. And then we're going to talk about another instance where a rapper went on stage and performed um, for a presidential candidate. And I don't remember them getting this much negative feedback. And we're going to go over the song that they actually performed and the contents of said song, since that seems to be a subject as well. OK, so let's get into it. I'm on this article from International Business Times. And they say Megan Thee Stallion ignited a firestorm. She twerks and sings X-rated songs at the Kamala Harris rally. Furthermore, Megan Thee Stallion is under fire for her performance at Kamala Harris presidential rally in Atlanta on July 30th. The rapper known for her bold and energetic performances took the stage at the Georgia State Convocation Center, where she performed her hit song Savage and other popular tracks. However, the nature of her performance has led to excuse me, significant backlash on social media and beyond. Dressed in a striking blue power suit, Megan was accompanied by a troupe of background dancers. Her performance included a segment where she twerked on stage, which left many in the audience visibly shocked. This moment quickly went viral, drawing criticism from various quarters. Many social media users expressed their disapproval, questioning the appropriateness of such a performance at a political rally. Imagine performing a sex song at a presidential rally. One user commented. Another remarked, how is this election real? The criticisms were not limited to the performance itself, but extended to Harris' decision to invite Megan to the event, period. Furthermore, they state, Twerking at a political rally is a choice. This can't be what we have representing us. This was a bad move for Kamala, one user wrote. Another predicted, Kamala is about to lose votes. Or Kamala, let me say her name correctly. The content of Megan's performance was also a focal point of the controversy. Critics highlighted the explicit nature of her songs, particularly given the presence of children and families in the audience. Why is she performing a sexual song in front of kids at a presidential rally? One user asked. 
Despite the backlash, Megan continued with her set, performing another hit song, Body. Before starting, she addressed the crowd saying, I know my ladies in the crowd love their body, and if you want to keep loving your body, you know who to vote for. This message intended to rally support for Harris was met with mixed reactions. Following her performance, Megan shared a video on social media with Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, excuse me, I keep saying it wrong. Praising her as the future president of the U.S. The post aimed to show solidarity and support for Harris' campaign, but it did little to quell the controversy surrounding the performance. Kamala Harris, who became the Democratic presidential nominee after Joe Biden stepped down, has garnered support from many high-profile figures, including Barack and Michelle Obama. However, the rally in Atlanta, meant to bolster her campaign, has instead drawn unwanted attention due to Megan's performance. Feels to me they're putting a lot of weight on this thing, man. Megan Thee Stallion is no stranger to advocacy and controversy. In 2021, she received a humanitarian award from Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee and has been vocal on various social issues. However, her recent performance has raised questions about the intersection of entertainment and politics and whether such performances are appropriate in a political context. The video of her performance quickly spread online with many calling it cringe and questioning Harris' judgment. This is a disgrace to our country, one user commented. Another remarked, maybe not the best song for a presidential campaign. The widespread criticism underscores the complex dynamics at play in political campaigns and the scrutiny faced by candidates and their supporters. So that's international business times. And it seems they were trying their best to be objective here, but it did seem like they were leaning a little bit towards criticism themselves. But let's just go over this thing, shall we? With all the conversation of overtly sexual messages, number one, let's look at the attire here. These women are fully clothed, right? They've got stockings under their skirts in case anything were to be revealed, right? We've got Megan in a crop top pantsuit, which if you look at her tour costumes and outfits this is extremely tame okay extremely tame and Kamala and her team knew who they booked they knew exactly who they booked I don't think they had any shame about this on the heels of this we even have I don't even know if this nigga still rap anymore but we've got Lil Pump coming out here calling Megan the Stallion an embarrassment to the culture and an embarrassment to the country. This the same motherfucker who was brought out during Trump's campaign and was called Lil Pimp. So we're over here talking about body autonomy. We're talking about women having the right to choose what the hell to do with themselves. And you got mistakenly called Lil Pimp on national motherfucking television, which as uh, the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef has so conveniently shown us, pimping is also known as a form of trafficking. Now you ain't even get there, uh, get up there and correct the nigga, but she's an embarrassment to the culture. You're not even of the culture, sir. We don't even know where you come from. But anyway, let's get back to the show. She's not up there in revealing clothing. She's not up there doing anything out of the way. The track list that she performed, she was only up there for about not even 15 minutes. She goes up, she performs Girls in the Hood. She performs her international hit, Mamushi. She performs Body, which was clearly a message, again, for body autonomy. And she performed her hit record, Savage, of course, which had a Beyonce remix. We see Kamala Harris coming out during her rallies to Beyonce's Freedom featuring Kendrick Lamar. So we see where her musical taste lies. I don't think that this was any mistake. I don't think they just got some random up there and was like, oh, oh my God, can't believe she's doing that. Not in the least. But it seems that we've got some people out here that act like they understand what's going on, but behind closed doors, they really care a little bit too much about how white people view us. That's what it is. 
they don't want to be viewed in an adverse way. I don't see how Megan Thee Stallion is a reflection of your personal views, your personal uh, appearance in, in public or how America generally views you. But for those of y'all that feel that way, grow the fuck up. Okay. That's what I say to that. But we're going to keep this show rolling and we're going to keep talking. Okay. Now, when I said we're going to address someone who performed at a presidential rally in the past that didn't receive this type of backlash, I'm actually talking about Jay-Z, Megan Thee Stallion's mentor, right? The head of her management group, Rock Nation, my living goat. My goat is Tupac, but my living goat is Jay-Z. 2012, he performed at a Barack Obama presidential um, not presidential, but um, presidential candidate rally, right? And he got on stage and performed 99 Problems. So if y'all have a problem with Megan Thee Stallion going up on stage and having sexually influenced lyrics, which she performed clean versions of her songs, made sure to bleep out the curse words and all. She did a little shimmy shimmy ya ya. She didn't do no full on twerk. She knows how to make that thing move like water. She barely made it seem like a pond. Didn't definitely didn't pawn the replay on your ass, but you know, whatever it is, what it is. Now let's go over the 99 problems lyrics. He got up there and he did say 99 problems, but mid ain't one as in Mitt Romney, one of the competitors at the time. But in the song, he says, I got the rap patrol on the Gat patrol. And he said these lyrics, he said, Gat patrol, Gat as in gun. So off rip, y'all have a problem with a woman's body over a gat. Foes that want to make sure my casket's closed. Rap critics that say he's money cash hoes. I'm from the hood, stupid. What types of facts are those? Those are pretty, that's pretty obvious, ain't it? I'm from the hood. Money cash hoes rules everything in the hood. But apparently Barack Obama was thugging and banging for bringing him up there. If you grew up with hoes and get zappa toes, you celebrate the minute you was having dough. I'm like, fuck critics. You could kiss my whole asshole. He's on stage rapping about kissing my whole asshole. Nobody say nothing about that. If you don't like my lyrics, you could press fast forward. Got brief with radio if they don't play my, you know, don't play their show. They don't play my hits. Well, I don't give a shit. So, Rap Max trying to use my black ass so advertisers can give them more cash for ads, fuckers. I don't know what you take me as or understand the intelligence that Jay-Z has. I'm from rags to riches, niggas. I ain't dumb. Got 99 problems, but mid ain't one. Hit me. So y'all hear this shit, man. And he still got elected. Motherfucker served two terms, didn't he? But this is the problem all of a sudden. Let's go further. The year is 94 and the trunk is raw. And the rear view mirrors the motherfucking law. He says 94 and I got dope cocaine crack in my trunk. And the cops for the pull me over for it. And performed it on national TV at a presidential rally. All good. President got elected. Everybody forgot about this shit. Moved on with life. I ain't got no problem with this shit, but I just want to put this in the face of people who may have had a problem with Megan. Let's address this shit for real, because clearly it did. It proved to be inconsequential. I got two choices, y'all. Pull over the car or bounce on the devil, put the pedal to the floor. And I ain't trying to see no how we chase with Jake. Plus, I got a few dollars I can fight the case. So I pull over to the side of the road. He said, I heard, son, do you know what I'm stopping you for? Because I'm young and I'm black and my hat's real low. Do I look like a mind reader, sir? I don't know. Am I under arrest or should I guess some more? Were you 155 in a 54 license and registration? Please step out of the car. Are you carrying a weapon on you? I know a lot of you are. I ain't stepping out of shit. <laughs> All my paper's legit. I know you mind if you look around the car a little bit. Go compartment is locked, so it's the chunk in the back. No more rights, so you're going to need a warrant for that. We're going to keep going through this. Aren't you sharp as a tack? You smart lawyer, something, somebody pardon something. Nah, I ain't passed the bar, but I know a little bit enough for you want to legally search my shit. Let's see how smart you are when the canine come. I got crack in my trunk, but you can't find none. Hit me. <laughs> Yo, 
Are you serious? I ain't going to go no further. I ain't going to go no further. I think I served y'all with enough. But everybody loved Barack Obama. Everybody was, oh, my God. Oh, my president is black. My car is too. But now all of a sudden, y'all want to jump on Megan Thee Stallion back and Miss Kamala Harris. Because she showed a little bit of a shimmy, shimmy, ya ya, ya ya. Y'all going to have to get the fuck up out of here, man. Now, I, my channel is not made for presidential debates. My channel is not made for too much political, you know what I'm saying, discourse and discussion. Every now and then we'll talk about some social shit, but I'm not here to influence nobody's votes. I'm not here to influence nobody's opinion about campaigns or policy. And I saw some idiots out there that said, why, why didn't, uh, you know, it would have been so much better served if Kamala and Megan Thee Stallion would have had a conversation about upcoming policy. What the hell? What? 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 Now, what I also find interesting is so many people are openly outraged and criticizing this. Y'all niggas wasn't even watching that shit live. Right? Because if you would have watched it live, you would have saw that the two niggas that did the little little interlude after Megan's performance. Who knows who they were hired by or what their educational background is. But even they was goddamn nervous and stumbling trying to talk about policy and what was coming up next. Imagine if you put Megan Thee Stallion, a rapper, everybody knows rappers ain't supposed to be known for this type of stuff. But I would imagine them niggas that they had up there graduated from some sort of prestigious university in this country. And them motherfuckers was stumbling, spooked and trying to figure some shit out. Come on, dog. Let's be let's be sensible about what it is that we talking about. Let's be real. You know, and as a black man in this country, I got to say a lot of you motherfuckers, y'all have this really, really bad case of self-induced hate. Y'all have this really bad, really stank ass hatred of black women, body autonomy, them coming out doing what the fuck they want to do. You niggas get to sag pants off your ass every day. Off your ass. Even when your ass crack is sweaty and people can see it, you motherfuckers get to go to the grocery store and walk around like that. No problem. But y'all worried about a woman dancing on stage. Come the fuck on, bruh. Excuse me? You know what I mean? Y'all motherfuckers out here, a lot of you niggas out here ain't taking care of your kids, ain't making no effort to take care of your kids. Y'all planting seeds in these women and disappearing, moving to Jamaica, going to Monaco. Hell. Y'all motherfuckers can't be bothered and you live in the next neighborhood over. And you out here mad at a woman that's out here performing, advocating for women's rights. Women's right to choose to hopefully one day not have to deliver the seeds of y'all wretched ass sperm. Because of what this country has reversed. Again, I'm not here to influence nobody's vote. Not here to influence nobody's viewpoints on either competitor. But if we're being sensible about reality, let's just take a back seat. Sometimes your opinion just don't need to be heard. <laughs> that seems to be a really, really rough talking point for some people. Sometimes your private interests should remain private because you end up making yourself look like a motherfucking idiot. A dumbass, a degenerate. And y'all out here mad at Kamala Harris and Megan Thee Stallion for a little shimmy shimmy. Come the fuck on, bruh. A lot of you niggas are in committed relationships and marriages, paying content creators on OnlyFans multiple dollars out your pocket per month, hiding that shit from your lady. But for some reason, it's too much of a stretch of your imagination to come out here and advocate for women's rights 
Because let's be honest, if this shit hit the fan like it possibly could, you ain't going to have the opportunity to keep doing that shit. We've already heard that they knocking out access to some of them sites y'all like visiting in the first place, depending on where you live at. Not to mention what it's going to look like for these creators that keep you entertained and keep you doing the beatboxing your crib. But you ain't willing to accept body autonomy. That's the line you draw. I don't understand you motherfuckers, man. I don't understand you. I never will. And I don't intend to. People are fucking crazy. <laughs> Y'all out here saying, oh, this, this, this is too sexual. But you got the other motherfucker on the other side claiming that the presidential candidate was overtly sexual to get to where she is, making false allegations that she slept her way to the top. We have people out here that have ran with the narrative that uh, goddamn Montel Williams' daughter, y'all remember that old photo of Montel Williams, his daughter, and Kamala Harris at the motherfucking red carpet of an award show or some shit? People ran with the narrative that this man's daughter was one of his, I don't know, I guess concubines or side pieces. And he was out here pimp daddy macking. And even though that has been completely debunked, it's still some motherfuckers out here claiming it as true and trying to use it as a strike against this woman. But for some reason, that's not too far. For some reason, that's not over the top. For some reason, that's honorable in some way. Again, I'm not here to influence nobody in terms of your vote or your idea on policy. I'm just reporting on what I've been seeing. <laughs> if we're going to try to be evolved as a human race, let's let's get the evolution going. Let's get to evolving, please, because the old shit, we already know the old shit ain't the way. And some of you motherfuckers letting that little 250 that you got two, three years ago go to your motherfucking head. Again, I don't care what side you on, but don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. All right. That's all I got for y'all on this one. We ain't going to be up here all day talking about this shit, but I do want to go ahead and give a salute to Megan and Stallion for a performance. I did hate the fact that the sound wasn't all the way booming the way it could have. I'm sure it was sounding much better inside the actual venue, but how it sounded over the TV and through the actual live stream, it wasn't hitting like it could. I've seen some people say, you know, it kind of reminded them of a pep rally a little bit. Well, I think it should have because that's essentially what it was. Where you think the concept comes from? But again, I'm going to catch y'all a little bit later. Much love and respect. Hope y'all enjoy. And uh, be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Become an insider. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. Much love and respect. Y'all peace. King of my city in cul de sac. Coming, I swing like soldier ass. Leading my people like quarterback. But I study this shit, I'm an almanac. Had to get up and grind. Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply. Came with the chip and the dip, it just single the mind. We finna do more than survive. I need my shit. Spinning the block for the gooder, we hitting the jeweler to flood out the net. We don't do beef for computers, so I'm straight out the sewer, we come when you rest. Niggas be looking perplexed, so keeping my foot on their neck. No map, I trust my gut for the quest. With drama, I'm fully oppressed. I was ready for years and they died of me. All of a sudden, they tell me they proud of me. I've been dropping these haters like calories. Cross them out, I came back with some battery. Stand for my honor, but you run no gunner. Packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble. I done came too far to be humble.